Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, welcome back. Today we're doing episode 0 of the Liu Bei Let's Play. Uh, episode 0 will have no gameplay. Uh, if you're interested in just watching gameplay, uh, please feel free to just skip this video and uh, come back for episode 1. Uh, for episode 0, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I set the background story and the lore for Liu Bei uh, before we officially start his campaign uh, because I don't want to actually waste a lot of the gameplay time uh, discussing this uh, background information. I kind of want to just dump all of it in this one episode and uh, for those of you who are really interested in the history and the backstory, uh, this is the episode for you. So going to start off the in-game uh, opening trailer, uh, which kind of sets the tone for when the story begins. Uh, please enjoy. Xiaoqing 奈何天子暗弱虽然他们迎趋以府但这种脆弱的联盟必定不会长久。Okay, so at the end here, we got a glimpse of our uh, protagonist, Liu Bei, and his two sworn brothers, uh, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. And uh, we have the game open here, we're gonna open up a new game, uh, select Liu Bei. 索取非议,乃是不胜。眼见董卓祸乱天下刘备是要根除乱政匡扶汉室 Ok, now that the narration's over, let's get started. Now, the purpose of this episode is to provide all the necessary background information on Liu Bei for us to start the campaign. Uh, most of the lore that I will be sharing draws from the Romance of the Three Kingdom, a book written in the early 15th century by Luo Guanzhong, uh, it's the same guy who had the quote at the beginning of the trailer. Uh, although the book is not entirely factual, uh, it is based on real people and real events, much like the Greek classic Odyssey. Uh, also like the Odyssey, it is considered to be one of the four greatest uh, Chinese literary works and has had huge impacts on Chinese history and culture. Uh, it is also one of the main reasons I am kicking off the channel with the Liu Bei Let's Play, as he was portrayed as the protagonist in the book. So the book starts a few years prior to the starting point in the game, which is year 190, with the start of the Yellow Turban Rebellions. Uh, when we do a, a Yellow Turban Let's Play, I'll definitely do a more flushed out and detailed story of the Yellow Turban faction, how it plays into uh, their uh, different form of uh, tech tree and such, but now it's uh, Liu Bei's story time. Okay, let's start. Liu Bei is the descendant of King of Zhongshan, Liu Sheng. So he's uh, Liu Sheng's uh, descendant. Now, Liu Sheng is a prince uh, to the sixth emperor at the Han Dynasty, uh, which is uh, at more than 350 years in the past from where we are at the start of the game because at the start of the game we're at the end of the Han Dynasty and 
Liu Sheng was the son of the sixth emperor of the Han Dynasty. So it's been 350 years since Liu Bei can trace his line back to the ruling family. This makes Liu Bei a distant, distant, distant relative to the ruling family. Um, his branch of the family has fallen on hard times, uh, for they have lost their lordship uh, many generations ago, and now resides in the small town of Zhuojun. Uh, Zhuojun is uh, uh, southwest of modern-day Beijing. Uh, Liu Bei uh, had it especially tough in his family because his father died young, uh, leaving him and his mother uh, to sell straw shoes uh, for a living. They basically weave straw shoes and sell them at the market. So when he's 15, um, he did, however, manage to use his lineage uh, to get a position to study under Lu Zhi, uh, who was a famous local scholar and administrator in general, uh, where he was classmates with Gong Sun Zan. Uh, this is where his in-game relationship, uh, of, he has a past friendship with Gong Sun Zan. This is where it comes from. Uh, at the start of the book, uh, Liu Bei is 28. One day he comes to the market to sell his shoes, and he sees the local government uh, has made a decree, uh, seeking militia volunteers to help fight the looming yellow turban threats. After seeing this decree, he's overcome with feelings, uh, saddened by the state of his current situation and the situation of the Han Dynasty. And he lets out this long sigh, which was overheard uh, by a nearby butcher. And the butcher asks him, you know, why the long face? Uh, Liu Bei goes over there, introduces himself. You know, I'm Liu Bei, relative of the royal family. And the, the butcher is like, oh, I'm Zhang Fei, you know, the rich guy in town who owns farms, you know, a butcher, a liquor shop, a peach a orchard. You know, etc., etc. You know, but Liu Bei basically says, "I'm royalty. Uh, I'm in hard times. The Han Dynasty in hard times. I feel helpless. I want to do something. The government need me, but I feel so useless." So Zhang Fei, uh, you know, likes to, uh, you know, be social and make friends, and really loves wine. So he asked Liu Bei to go to a, you know, a wine stall with him and they sit down and go for a drink and talk about Liu Bei's ambitions, Liu Bei's family past. And uh, while he was getting brainwashed by Liu Bei, um, Guan Yu walks into the wine peddler shop. Now Guan Yu uh, walks in, uh, he's new to town, he's traveling uh, through this town. And he comes in, asks the you know store owners like, hand me a cold beer, you know, I gotta get it to go, because I'm going to town to join the militia. Now Zhang Fei and Liu Bei sees Guan Yu, and you know can't help but to stare, you know, you know why? Guan Yu is humongously tall. Uh, according to the books, Guan Yu is six feet eight, and not only is he six feet eight. He had a foot and a half long flowing beard. You know, he would fit perfectly in today's NBA. Now they see him, they ask him to come down, uh, take a seat with them, and they have they he joins in their chat with Liu Bei, and Liu Bei completes his brainwash on both of them. And Zhang Fei comes out and says, You know what? I like your ambition. Um, it's so boring being rich here in this small town. I'm going to sell all my estate, acres of land, you know, liquor refinery, liquor store, uh, pig farm, butchering stall, and we'll use the money, we'll fund our own militia unit, and then join the government. Now, Guan Yu is also thinking, okay, this doesn't sound bad. I'll join up with Team Liu Bei. You know, for Guan Yu, a little bit about his past. Uh, Guan Yu is from Hedong. Um, uh, when he was young, uh, he stood up to a local corrupt official and killed him and has been on the run ever since so Guan Yu is a fugitive on the run for the past five years and um, seeing the yellow turban rebellion he's coming try to you know uh, clean up his reputation join the army maybe do something good erase his past and so 
they agree to um, join together to fight the Yellow Turban. Uh, Zhang Fei, who is probably very drunk right now, suggests that they all come together tomorrow to his peach orchard uh, on his estate. Uh, once again, he's loaded, you know, peach orchard at his house. Uh, come to his peach orchard at his estate tomorrow uh, so that they can uh, take an oath together and become sworn brothers. Um, now I can continue to tell you the next part, but I think it's better to show you with a song and a music video. So please enjoy this blast from the past. Hope I didn't scare you off with that accurate historical footage, but you get the idea, even if you don't understand the Chinese. Uh, the three of them become oath sworn brothers and vow to protect the Han Empire from farther decay. So they go off, and for the next few years, they fight against the old turbans, uh, against Dong Zhuo, but because of their lowly background, um, their contributions were not rewarded with high government positions. So while all the other faction leaders in the game uh, either have territories prior to the rebellion or were handsomely rewarded with land of their own following the, uh, their success in suppressing the rebellion, Liu Bei, however, finds himself homeless at the start of the game. Uh, well, this in, it's not entirely accurate um, t uh, when you compare it to the books. Um, I think Total War um, did capture the essence of Liu Bei's situation uh, at the beginning of the game. Uh, 
So I'm okay with the fact that we start without a province to our own, even though Pingyuan should be ours uh, in 190, or before we jump into the game. Uh, let's quickly take a look at Liu Bei as a faction in the game. We start the game in Dong. Uh, once again, surrounded by remnants of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, uh, we have a large army of militiamen led by Liu Bei and our two Swarm Brothers, who have both been proven to be talented generals. Uh, Liu Bei is our faction leader. He is a commander, uh, that's his character class. Uh, they excel at boosting ally units. Uh, well, they can handle themselves on the battlefield. Uh, they're not particularly great at dueling or fighting enemy units. Uh, he is well suited to be paired with uh, melee cavalry as his retinue. Uh, his trait as a virtuous idealist uh, provides our faction with plus 4 public order and minus 50% militia infantry upkeep. Uh, both of these are very powerful buffs. Uh, we'll try to make efficient use of both of these in our game. Um, now we look at our faction's unique resource. Uh, our, unique resource uh, our unique resource is called Unity. Uh, Liu Bei can gain unity by keeping his generals satisfied or by releasing captured enemies after battles. By leveling up unity, uh, Liu Bei will gain additional administrator slots as well as increase to income. Liu Bei can also spend unity for unique assignments or to annex Han Empire commanderies without fighting. Um, our faction's unique unit are the E Archer and their upgraded version, the E Marksman. Uh, they are both uh, better than the standard Archer and Marksman, and they have additional um, melee attack, so they're very effective uh, even once their arrow run out or once they enter close hand to hand combat. Um, well, not hand-to-hand, sword-to-sword combat. Uh, they are available for recruitment by all allied generals, uh, regardless of class, uh, starting at level 3 for the E Archer and level 6 for the E Marksman. Um, and next, our unique faction building is the Shu Han Tax Collection building. It replaces the regular tax collection building tree. Uh, our version provides additional income while uh, having a decrease in the public order uh, penalty. Uh, usually tax uh, buildings at level 1 has a penalty of 4 public order per turn, or disorder basically, uh, while the Shu Han tax collection building will only be negative 3. Uh, if we combine this with a plus 4 uh, public order passive from Liu Bei, we can build this building without having a hamper in our public order for our commanderies, and this will make a very efficient and uh, effective income building. Lastly, Liu Bei also starts the game with the ability to confederate or absorb other factions. It's pretty hard to do, but I think they give this ability to Liu Bei just so that his storyline makes sense. Um, this is pretty much everything I want to touch before starting the Let's Play. Um, hope y'all enjoy the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. To support the channel and definitely come back for episode one. Uh, see you next time. Bye.